Japan ranked the Yakuza games. Yes, you heard that right. Pretty much I found a list on the interwebs where a load of Japanese people ranked the games all the way up to Yakuza 7. There's even comments for each game where the voters talked about why they liked it. So I thought it'd be pretty fun for us to see just how different their opinions are from ours. But before we actually get into the list, there's a poll that was provided alongside the list regarding the charm of the series. Pretty much this chart shows what the people like the most about the Yakuza series. 61% said the story, 24% said the characters, 9% said the action sequences, 5% said the comedy, and 1% said other. Now this is pretty interesting, and now I'm curious what you guys like the most. So comment that down below, and let's get into the list. At number 11 we have Yakuza Dead Souls. Now this doesn't surprise me at all. It takes a whole different route and in some ways, the game kind of felt like it was made for an American audience. Not that the sales were great, but I still feel like generally Westerners enjoy this game a lot more. Whether it's because of the memes or just John Yakuza, there's a multitude of reasons. We have a direct quote from a businessman in his 40s. Although it is controversial, I found it interesting defeating zombies in Yakuza. After all, Killing zombies with guns is something that hasn't been in the series so far, so I enjoyed it. First off, I love how that it tells you that it's a businessman in his 40s. And secondly, I totally get it. I'm guessing people like him made up most of the audience at the time. So suddenly getting a zombie game instead of a game you're used to must have been kind of weird. Hey, I probably wouldn't have liked it, but I'm glad he did. A stay at home mom in her 20s also had an opinion and it seems like she enjoyed it. Hooray! Especially noting that the final battle had a Resident Evil feel to it. Now I've never played Resident Evil, but if any of you have, you can attest to that statement in the comments. I've seen some clips of a final battle though, and it looks pretty darn insane. There's probably like one or two fans that think Dead Souls is absolute peak. At number 10, we have Kiwami 2. The heroine is Daigo says this woman in her 30s. Ah, I guess based off what she says here, she's a Yumi stan. Considering it's one of the criticisms listed here, I'm guessing the whole Sayama story wasn't received that well in Japan. Makes more sense why they just threw her out of the story at the start of Yakuza 3. Then this guy in his 40s simply wanted to be a hater that day. It may be the best workmanship, but since it's a remake, I did not give it a perfect score. So he literally knocked off points because it's a better version of the original. Incredible reasoning sir. If you made a combat ranking video, it would definitely make everyone happy. At number 9 we have Yakuza Kenzan, a game that never got localized. Apparently this game featured various Japanese celebrities alongside the RGG cast. A guy in particular said, it's hard, but anyone can enjoy it. And by trying to deduce what he's saying here, I guess he's saying that the story covers real events in a great and modern way. And that's the best part, because the combat is difficult. Not the first time I've heard that about Kenzan, but I can't really speak on it since I haven't played through it. At number 8 we have Ishin, the other samurai game that I've actually played. And I'm not gonna lie, I remember enjoying Ishin, but generally the remake received mixed reviews in the west. You can experience the city of Kyoto at the end of the Edo period, says a student. You know, it must be nice having your country's history recreated with Yakuza characters. I think we often forget that both Ishin and Kenzan are based off of true stories featuring historical figures. It's a pretty cool way to learn about these periods. Even for a Westerner, while still being solid Yakuza experiences in their own ways. Though, Mr. Student also said, Unlike other titles, the final boss is not a strong enemy, so you won't be frustrated. You see, that's where I can't relate. In the remake, they literally give you OP powers. So all you have to do is use the most effective one to absolutely obliterate your enemy. I suppose without all the magic, it would be harder for me. But again, anyone that played OG Ishin can relate more to this take. And yeah, keep in mind they are talking about original Ishin which I've heard is actually better than the remake in pretty much every way. At number 7 we have Yakuza 5. Okay that's just wrong. 
I know there's a lot of people that don't like this game, but I refuse to accept that it's number 7 bad. If we're only ranking games up to Yakuza 7, this should be at least top 3. The only issue I really had with this game was that it wasn't a good ending for Kiryu, which is not an issue anymore. Besides that, the story was great, the combat was great, it looked amazing and it had great pacing. So it's crazy how low this is. Gorgeous casting. She's basically talking about how including famous Japanese celebrities makes 6 more approachable to normies. You don't have to necessarily play the rest of the games to enjoy it and seeing familiar Japanese celebrities enhances the experience. And yeah, I, I guess I can see that. It came out when Yakuza was more successful in Japan after all. But having a contained game that features only Japanese celebrities wouldn't really fly so well nowadays. A lot of these reviews actually mention the cast, which I found interesting. Really just shows how important the casting was to Yakuza 6's promotion in Japan. And with the introduction of the Dragon Engine, they could recreate the faces much closer to real life. Hmm. I still don't know how I feel about 6 being ranked at number 7 though. At number 6, we have Yakuza 3. Ladies and gentlemen, I was right all along. The Japanese think Yakuza 3 is better than Kiwami 2 and Yakuza 6. The people have spoken, but honestly, how was it ranked higher than both of those games? I kinda felt like Yakuza 3 would be looked down on, due to how dated the graphics and mechanics are. To me, when I think of Yakuza 3 fans, I usually think of people who have broken the game so hard and have invented a whole new playstyle with a combat. Oh, well the answer is Okinawa. That does make sense. Who literally doesn't like Okinawa? Taking the series away from the streets of Kamurocho and Sotenbori, Okinawa just brought the energy the series desperately needed. It seems it was one of the first Yakuza games to include celebrities too, since they were actually able to capture faces. Again, it's not something I can really pay attention to, since I don't know any of these celebrities. But I guess it makes sense why the Japanese find some of the characters a bit more memorable than we did. Imagine we had a Yakuza-esque series set in the US. Like imagine Jack Black just randomly being a part of GTA San Andreas. Sure, it's a really bizarre scenario to think about, but that would have made the game even more goated. I'm sure there's some kind of relation there. At number 5, we have Yakuza 4. Now this makes sense to me, since I would place it around the same place too. It introduced multiple protags, and besides the confusing elements of a plot, it's really just a solid Yakuza experience. I actually would have rated this over Yakuza 5, mainly due to the pacing. But hey, not bad Japan. And yeah, pretty much every review here is talking about how the story and the new characters were the interesting part. Plenty of drama comparisons, which I totally get. I mean, from Yakuza 1 to 4, 4 definitely had the most intricate plot, which actually ended up being a bit confusing, but it did all fit at the end, and it's a great story. Rubber bullets aside. At number 4, we have Yakuza 5. Now, when it comes to specifically the combat, I think Yakuza 5 is damn near the peak of the series, but I love all of the locations it included too. So when it comes to that fun aspect of the game, 5 tops 4 in many ways. It's just that the pacing of 5 holds it back a lot in my opinion. It all comes down to personal preference though. I liked all of the series. In Yakuza 5, I was able to go to Kamurocho, but also to other cities, and it was fun to change the characters I controlled. However, my husband is the boss. Uh, it seemed boring, so I gave it a rating of 4. Personally, I was impressed by the story and it was interesting. So I'm guessing her husband found the story boring, but she liked it. And I'm not surprised that the inclusion of multiple cities were the major reason for liking the game in a lot of these reviews. I'm sure most people can agree that that was the coolest part of Yakuza 5. At number 3 we have Kiwami. Oh dear, I know this is gonna make some of you upset. For some reason, Kiwami gets a lot of flack in the West, apparently because the combat is worse than Zero, and the bosses are overpowered to shit. As a casual Yakuza brawler, I personally couldn't notice a difference between the combat, and the one boss I really had an issue with was the Jingu fight. Like I really think it's overhated, 
and the game provides a solid recreation of the first game, whilst also being easy to run on PC, unlike a certain other poorly optimized game. In general, I don't really see any complaints about the game, only praises of how it's a good remake. I guess this review stands out to me, because she's talking about how Kiwami makes for a great starting point, and if you play Zero after, you might gain an appreciation for certain characters. I've been telling you guys this exact thing. Heck, even Kason recently did. I promise we are cooking with his take. Then at number 2, we have Yakuza 7. Solid game, great story, great experience. I'm personally not a fan of the combat. What did you say? I still think it stacks up as a solid JRPG, and the people of Japan definitely seem to hold it in high regard. Of course, there's gonna be some people not happy with the changes. Like this woman's favorite part of the game was taking screenshots while looking at the sea. And while this review is a little harsh, at least they found their own fun within the game. Despite its controversial flaws, it's still ranked number two on the list. So that just shows how good of an overall game it is. And to no one's surprise, Yakuza 0 is number one on the list. The story of two hot men's growth. I mean, we all saw it coming. It's the game that most people play and everyone talks about. Top tier combat, great story, and the first time Majima was given the spotlight with an actual deep story. Not a single negative review I can find. And as you can see, there's just plenty of praise regarding when the story is set, who it features, and so on. But yeah, there's at least someone here that suggests you start with Zero. Pretty much everything said here is exactly what people have said in the West. So overall, I guess this confirms that Yakuza 0 is just universally the most loved Yakuza game. Honestly, the list wasn't that bad. It had some big differences to how a Western list would typically be, but as expected, Zero and Seven dominated the top two spots. Let me know what you guys think though. Did any of these placements outrage you? Do you mostly agree with them? Let me know. Also, if you want to see more stuff like this, go ahead and like and subscribe. It just gives me a clearer understanding of this is what you want to see. And if you guys want to support me further, I've just launched channel memberships. It's really just another way to support me because I'm trying to post much more frequently nowadays. So any help is appreciated, but fear not, watching me is already enough. I'll be posting again in a few days though, so see you in the comments.